Hi. In my previous video, I did a teardown of the Statum Symmetricon 8040 Rubidium Frequency Standard. And I mentioned that I was going to do some modifications, particularly to expand the pulse width of the 1 pulse per second output, which is what I'm going to show you today in this video. By the way, if you haven't watched my previous video, you can check that one out first. And just as a side note, I personally don't like splitting a video into multiple parts and like to keep each episode as self-contained as possible so viewers can pick and choose and don't have to watch my videos in any particular order. Anyway, for those who have watched my previous video, you saw that the pulse width of the one pulse per second output from the TTL board is very narrow. It's only about 20 microsecond wide. And uh, while it isn't really a problem, I think it's probably better to make the waveform more symmetrical so that it can be viewed more easily on an oscilloscope. Now a few viewers also commented on my statement on using the traditional analog scope for viewing this low repeat rate narrow pulses. And yes, you definitely can use an analog scope to do that, which I will show you in just a minute. But my main point was that in these situations, a DSO would be more convenient to use, especially uh, when the nature of the signal under measurement is not previously known. So now let's take a look at some of the modifications I did. The first thing I did, as I mentioned last time, I used this mainly to once in a while to calibrate my equipment, so I don't want it to be on all the time. So the very first thing I did was uh, added a mains power switch, which is right here. Actually, I had this top removed already, so let's uh, just take it off. So basically, this is really nothing fancy. It's just a, a power switch that switches the live line from the mains input. So it's right here, as you can see. Now, the second thing I did was uh, added this uh, BNC output, uh, which I happen to have lying around. Now, it's not exactly the same kind, but uh, nevertheless, it fits really well. So it it uh, goes through uh, this cable here and uh, right now I temporarily plugged it into the original one pulse per second output so we can use that to use the uh, analog scope to view the pulse again. So now I'm going to plug in the power and as you will see that uh, now it's no longer powered on by default so now we just turn the switch and it will be on. Here we go. So now while it is uh, warming up, of course the signal output won't be very stable, but nevertheless, we can still see the one pulse per second output, So, which is what we're gonna do right now. So for that, I'm gonna use a uh, BNC cable. Yeah, I just want to second. I just get it here. So we are gonna put into this uh, output here. So by the way, right now this uh, output is wired to the original one pulse per second from this uh, circuit board and uh, without any modification. So let's put it onto the oscilloscope and see what we got. And as you can see, uh, the trigger light sometimes occasionally actually at one pulse per second is uh, illuminating, so which means it's a triggering. But of course, you know, if you are just using a an analog scope, right, without any adjustment. You really can't see anything going on. So the very first thing uh, in that situation, you suspect some signal is triggering, and uh, but you can't see it. We can turn on the intensity of the, uh, the scope. So let's turn it on. Turn it up, brother. So turn up the intensity. Of course, you know, you still can't see anything, right? So the next thing is uh, because of the, the pause, you can see here is relatively low. So we know that it, the signal is probably a very low frequency signal. So we can reduce the time base. Let's uh, make it uh, narrower. Okay. So now it still doesn't trigger. So now we have to uh, fiddle around with the triggering circuitry. So for this trigger right now, we're setting to auto. So we can actually uh, change to norm. The norm actually is triggered basically by every sweep. Uh, it only starts sweeping when the signal is uh, triggered. So now we can see already that this thing is triggering, but we just still we still cannot see the pulse because it was so narrow and this time base is so low. So the next thing we want to do is we want it to um, 
expand the time base a little bit to see where we can see that signal. Okay, so let's expand it. So expand, and we have to adjust. Okay. And as you can see, when we started adjusting that, and uh, you will notice that here we have this top of the signal, and here we have the bottom of the signal. So right now we're at a 50 uh, microsecond per division, so you can see that the pulse is actually less than half of that. So we can keep expanding this uh, time base. So now we're at 20 microsecond per division, and uh, okay, let me turn on, turn up the uh, the intensity a little bit. So now you can see that uh, we are indeed triggering on this uh, pulse, which have a pulse width of roughly 20 microseconds per division. Now, but what is the period of the time of the pulse? Well, we can we can view that right by lowering the time base again. Now we find the signal, so we can come back and lower the uh, the time base. Of course, you can also deduce that from the the frequency that this trigger uh, indicator illuminates. So now let's uh, turn it down a little bit. So let's uh, try to. Two hundred milliseconds per per division. So now you can see that the pause is actually we have a uh, one, two, three. Okay, so you can count these uh, divisions: one, two, three, four, five. So that's roughly well, uh, you can't really tell, but that's one uh, pulse per second. So that's why um, you know, as we mentioned earlier, it will be much easier to use a digital scope because we can turn on the persistence and we can actually see the actual pulse shapes very well. Whereas here, because of the uh, the trace is so intense and sometimes if you're not paying attention you won't even be able to see that little uh, top there. Anyway, so that's uh, how the uh, original uh, pulse looks on an oscilloscope. And now I'm going to show you my the circuitry for expanding that pulse. So to expand the pulse width, we need something called a monostable circuit. And uh, the simplest thing I can think of is to use a triple five timer, as everybody has one of these lying around. Of course, you can always use a dedicated uh, 74HC, let's say uh, 123 uh, monostable multivibrator circuit, and uh, IC rather. But since everybody has a triple five timer lying around somewhere, I thought that would that would be a great way to utilize that. So here is a circuit that I'm using. And as you can see here, the very narrow pulse comes in to into this uh, input jack. And we have some pulse shaping network here. So this is a really simple RC circuit and basically it is to increase the rising edge of uh, the signal. Because uh, as you can see here, when the pulse first comes in, this capacitor is shorted, so basically directly feeds uh, to the base. So it has a surge of the base current, which uh, uh, turn this uh, transistor into a uh, saturation mode very fast. So this circuit was uh, widely used for uh, for these kind of triggering circuitry. And now we have this uh, 2N3904 NPN transistor, and when it turns on, you're going to be pulling the pulling the uh, the trigger pin low. So when the trigger pin is low, this uh, RC circuit R1 and C1 begins charging. Okay. So when it exceeds the uh, the threshold, uh, the triple five timer resets it, so the output would be dropping back to low. So now the output signal is something more like this. By choosing uh, carefully choosing the values of R1 and C1, we can kind of uh, obtain a symmetrical uh, waveform. So for this particular uh, configuration, and uh, the the output width, sorry, the output yes, the output uh, pulse width is uh, roughly determined by 1.1 times R1 C1. So 
by choosing this value, I put a star next to R1 because you know you can adjust this a little bit to come up with exact the same pulse width you want. Uh, for this, roughly, the uh, the output width is about uh, 0.5 second, so it's roughly a symmetrical uh, waveform. So now let's take a look at the circuit we have here. And for that, I used one of the existing mounting uh, plates inside this unit. And as you can see here, I mounted this tiny board, which is just a portable board of the, the mono-stable circuit I described earlier. And uh, so there really isn't too much to it. Now, the actual power comes in from uh, this end. Basically, I can tap that into the original uh, TTL board. So basically, the power comes from actually one of these empty uh, pins here. So the input into this comes directly from underneath this uh, w uh, this input jack. Uh, sorry, one of these output jack. So now, um, if I take, I unplug this output which we just plugged in earlier to test original one pulse per second uh, signal, we can actually plug it in here. I need to uh, fasten it after everything's done, but right now we can just plug it in here, okay? So now, right now we have formed the circuit where the output of uh, this goes directly to the BNC back here. So now the pulse width would be half a second. So let's take a look at that. And uh, let me just uh, rest the So let me plug this in. And um, so while it's, uh, we'll turn it on. So now it should be much easier to uh, view on this oscilloscope. So we'll see that. And uh, let me put it on the scope here. Okay. So let us take a look at the oscilloscope. So now it's uh, actually, uh, the reason it's uh, always high is because the time base is pretty uh, high. So let's uh, turn it down here. And we'll turn up the, the intensity. So now you can see that uh, that the little cursor, not cursor, that little trace is jumping around. Okay, so that actually is a square wave signal. Of course, again, it would be much easier to view this on a um, digital scope, which I will show you just in a bit, because now it's obviously you can't really see the uh, the persistence on the screen. Now I powered up my Rigo oscilloscope, so let's take a look. Let me zoom in a little bit. So again, this is the expanded one pulse per second output. So let's put that into the channel one. And as you can see, already we're already triggering. So uh, let me just adjust the, the height of this a little bit. So we're already triggering here. And uh, the reason uh, this is so wide is because, you know, the time base obviously is uh, too narrow. So let's uh, turn time base to, uh, to 200 millisecond. So now you can see that we're triggering uh, on this uh, signal, which is beautiful looking. And uh, the width of that is roughly 250, a little bit less than 250, but uh, that's, you know, can be a fine, finely tuned via the RC constants of the, uh, the mono stable circuit. So I hope you learned something new from this video. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and I will catch up with you next time.